Susan has started a program that is called Enriching Life. She is going to talk about one of the programs offered by the ministry, the Multicultural Folk Ulanic Dance. Help me welcome Susan Grace. <laughs> Susan, Susan, before you start, would you please tell us the name of this program? Yes, thank you, Jack. I had told Jack on my note that I have a program, a ministry that I started, which is called Enriqueciendo la Vida. For some reason, Jack did not want to say the whole name of this program and wanted to just give the English translation of the name. This Enriqueciendo la Vida ministry, I started because I met with somebody at the lighthouse. Now the lighthouse is a place that you can go and get a free meal. And so a lot of the people who go there are those who either are very poor or are homeless, which of course you probably are very poor if you're homeless. And this person at the, at the lighthouse suggested that what the Latino people needed was to have other options besides picking and packing as career options. And thus, I started talking with some other people that I knew, Spanish-speaking Latinos, about this suggestion and garnered a lot of interest in being involved in this ministry. Well, I am a pastor starting a new church. I have no extra money to put into a ministry. So I told everybody, it has to be something that doesn't cost money, and you cannot charge any money for it. So it's totally free to the people who come. I actually got a committee of eight people who were interested in putting on workshops that would be free, that would enrich life, that would be something positive to offer to the community. All of these workshops that we decided to offer would be given in Spanish and they would be to benefit the primarily Spanish-speaking person. One of those individuals who came to me and offered to put on what I thought was just going to be a short-term workshop was Norma Ramirez. Norma put on, gave the, she offered to put on a camp program for children during the summer so they would learn the multicultural <coughs> folkloric dances. Well, I told her in the space, I couldn't see that we could have more than 12 children. So we started off with 12 children. We offered it to anyone who wanted to come, which means I also offered it to people in my church. I wasn't going to be discriminating against anybody. So we actually had a young, mentally retarded or intellectually disabled child who took part in this week-long camp. This program, however, has continued since then. We had the one week camp. We then started having one night a week of practices, classes for children to come and learn the dance. And we not only had them learn the dance, but be able to put on presentations. Well, this enriching life program has ended up enriching the lives of, oh, 500, 1,000 people in Wenatchee Valley? I can't tell you how many. Because this group has gone out and put on presentations all over. They started off with a presentation at the Fiestas Mexicanas in August or September. That has gone on and they have done presentations at church festivals, at fairs, <coughs> at senior citizen uh, assisted living communities, at any place that they've been asked to put on presentations. Thus, I think that one of the groups that have really had their life en enriched 
have been normal Americans, English speaking persons, because this dance group has been enriching people's lives with the cultural experiences that they are offering. This dance group is called Multicultural Folklore Dance, but it really is just offering Mexican folkloric dances. However, I would expect that there are very few people who realize that the country of Mexico is composed of lots of different states and lots of different cultures because there is the strong Indian cultures, of which there's more than one Indian culture, and the states are very different. The dances thus are also very different, and these dances are put on for the major celebrations that go on in each state. Thus, there are holidays that are specific to different states, and these celebrations thus become very different as they celebrate different things. The music is very different. The music ranges from polka to much more salsa or much more active, actually not active, very different music. So the, the music is different and the clothing is different. So there are some clothes that are for this state and a different set of clothing. So this group has gone and had the traditional Mexican clothes and dance, clothes and music as they put on this multicultural folkloric dance. I, however, am most proud of the enriching that this has provided the children that have taken part in this. Because so many of the children have not really known their parents' culture, although not all are Mexican. So the Mexican culture, so the English, the Americans' children haven't known the Mexican culture either. But the Mexican, the children of Mexican parents, they haven't known their parents' culture. And this has helped them to learn that culture, and in so doing, they have gained so much better self-esteem. All of a sudden, they are proud of where they come from. They are proud of their parents. They are proud of the people that come from that area of Mexico that their parents came from, of which before then, they really wanted to be American and not have their parents talk to them in Spanish because then they'd be embarrassed. And now, it just frees them up. Another group that has really been enriched it are the children who have come because they might be a little overweight. Well, all of a sudden they are doing so much activity and so much exercise that they have slimmed down. They have gained so much more energy than they ever had before. And so they are really feeling so much happier and so much more enriched. Thus, I am very proud to be part of this Multicultural Folklore Dance Program. And I hope that all of you also will have an opportunity to come. I am sure that we will have tons of programs in the future. And if you are interested, I'll be glad to let you know when the next one is. Thank you very much.